Atheist Nomads, episode 137, By Any Means, with Trav Mamone. The podcast you're about to listen to includes cursing and talking about hoo-hahs. Please be advised. We are the Atheist Nomads, bringing you history, science, politics, religion, and interviews with leaders in the atheist community. Not all those who wander are lost. Welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomads. I am Dustin. Joining me as always is Wesley. Hello, everybody. And joining us today is Trav Amone from the By Any Means podcast. Trav, welcome to Atheist Nomads. Hey, thanks for having me on. Hey, it's about time. I've, <laughs> I, I, I had a, <laughs> yeah. I had a, a, this amazing streak of just like getting a ton of guests all at w- all in one day. And then <laughs> <laughs> I, I literally l- lined up three guests all in like a space of like an hour. And then I was like, I have a, a Trav, I wanted you on. And so it was <laughs> like, okay, we'll have you in like three months. No, but <laughs> anyways. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh man so, well the yeah. funny thing is is that you know this week like let me let me see it's you guys uber 47 uh cellar oh. door skeptics and minnesota trans atheists are all interviewing me this week so yeah oh, it wow. looks like we both uh, struck gold <laughs> nice wow you are uh pretty uh heavily booked <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't even know I was that popular. <laughs> hey, this is totally off topic. But does cellar door skeptics have anything to do with Donnie Darko? You know what? It was funny when uh, Chris, when they were just starting the podcast, um, Chris messaged me on Facebook. I was like, "Hey, I'm starting this new podcast called Cellar Door Skeptics. Would you like to uh, record a little bumper for us, where you say, you know, hi, I'm so and so, and such such a podcast. You're listening to Cellar Door Skeptics, and you know, mention something about atheist revolution or whatever." And I said, yeah. "Yeah, sure. Tell me a little bit about your podcast, because according to a famous linguist, the two most beautiful <laughs> words in the English language are cellar door." Right. I don't know if he got the <laughs> reference or not. Oh man, yeah, love that movie. Uh, anyways, I'd be like, hey, <laughs> you know, blah blah blah. I am Frank the Rabbit, and you know, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, anyways, yeah, we're totally talking about a different show and not you or yours. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> so how how are yes. you? <laughs> how am I? Good, good, very good. Where where in the country are you, if you don't mind? Um, I live in Maryland's eastern shore region, like basically going towards uh, closer to Delaware than DC. I live about oh, an hour and a half away from Baltimore. Okay. That sounds horrible, but better than the Jersey Shore. Yeah. <laughs> no, trust me, the Maryland's eastern shore is much better than the Jersey Shore. Okay. Okay. Although, unfortunately, you know, even the Jersey Shore, Jersey Shore may have their Guidos. We have hillbillies sure. here, so mm. Mm. right. You are south I, of the, the Mason Dixon line. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Well, actually, weird. It's weird. Maryland like sits right on top of the Mason Dixon line. So depending on where you go, like some areas are real urban, and other areas are like total, you know, backwoods, um, like total country. So it's like this weird dynamic. In fact, let me tell you something about my little town of Easton. Um, the Easton, uh, the county courthouse has two statues in front one is of frederick Douglass, and the other is commemorating the talbot boys who are who were soldiers who fought for the confederacy from our county so that pretty much says everything you need to know about maryland oh right yeah despite the fact that maryland was never part of the confederacy right right (laughs) wow 
<laughs> that that's kind of, that kind of reminds me of uh, like Nantucket or uh, Martha's Vineyards. I mean, that's way up north in Massachusetts, and they have uh, Confederate shit up there too. It's kind of weird. Mm. Well, yeah, that's not too far yeah, from yeah. from where I live is the city of Atlanta, I and know. by city I mean a oh, okay. uh, place where a few rednecks live and have dirt roads. Uh, it used to be a booming town. And by booming, you know, this would have been late 1800s and, you know, 500 <laughs> uh, people. Def- but de- Definitely recent history. Yeah, yeah. It, it's still there and it's still called Atlanta and there's still a lot of Southerners here. Oh, okay. See, I always imagined that Atlanta would be a much bigger town because that's like the uh, state capital, right? In Georgia. Or I'm talking Idaho. Oh, oh, okay. I'm Atlanta, sorry. Idaho. When sorry, you I said... might have missed that detail. <laughs> yeah, Idaho's got weird oh, okay. shit. They, they, they like have this mirror of the South somehow. It's kind of odd. The, uh, actually, a, a lot of uh, Confederates, like after the Civil War, went up to Idaho just to get the fuck out of the area. And it's weird. Anyways, uh, yeah. so I, I hear you do a podcast. Yeah, yeah, it's called the By Any Means Podcast. It's a weekly show where I interview bloggers, um, podcasters, and activists about um, atheism, secularism, uh, humanism, social justice, feminism, and pretty much whatever else I want to uh, talk about. Um, some of my mm. past guests have included, uh, let's see, here, Hina Dadaboy, uh, Matthew yeah. Fasciani, uh, Stephanie Katormson, Callie Wright, yeah. Ishmael Brown. Uh, <laughs> let's see here, Sakivu Hutchinson. Um, I don't know if I should. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, spill the beans right now. I actually... Oh, name drop. Yeah, inter- yeah I actually just uh, emailed uh, Dave- David Silverman. Oh, uh, nice. Couple- oh. Yeah, yeah, and he um, emailed me back, and so we're trying to set up a time. The day he picked, though, I'm not really quite sure if it'll work for me because I work that day. So I'll, I'll Wait, keep no. in touch with him and see if maybe we can uh, find some find some time to chat. No, that's David Silverman. You got to make that work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is true. He is a very busy person. Oh man, we had him on our show what like a year and change ago. Oh uh, that was man, one of the the most fun I've had talking with the with a guest. That was shortly after episode fifty. Oh holy shit! All right, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, uh, be prepared. He talks a lot. We talked for like hour and forty five, two hours. So. Yeah, mm, either okay, have cool, like cool. E- yeah, either wanna... like have that really open thing going or just have like a direct questions you want to ask cuz he story tells a lot. It's awesome. Oh, uh, okay. Cool, cool. Uh, my when I do interviews, I usually have about 10 questions uh written down that I read off of a script and if somebody says something that reminds me of something be like, well yeah, that's kinda like in my experience where blah 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 you know, <laughs> we'll go from there. I would love to talk to David about the whole um firebrand atheism thing because I'm not really quite sure if I don't know, it seems like when it comes to my sort of militant atheism, I'm kind of somewhere in between uh, Christopher Hitchens and Chris Steadman, you know, I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm lukewarm, I don't know if lukewarm's a good term or not, like, I have a lot of Christian friends, they're, they're liberal Christian friends, though, so they have a lot of them, most of them have, like, the same social political views that I have, you know, we're all, oh. okay. you know, well, we can we'll all agree about, you know, then. right, right, yeah, they'll, um, <laughs> You know, we'll, we'll often talk about, you know, uh, white supremacy and patriarchy and all that stuff. But when religion mm-hmm. comes up, we kind of just don't mention it at all. <laughs> so I'm like, well, gee, I don't know if David Silverman would say I'm doing it wrong or not. <laughs> <laughs> I remember back in the day when uh, it, it, some of the first atheist billboards went up and they were they were like the, the really nice fluffy ones like uh uh, can you be good with uh, good without God? Many are. And, you know, and, right. you know, everybody was just all up in arms and pissed about it. And then David Silverman came out and, you know, his his went up and, you know, everybody just lost their mind, you know, and then the, then there became like the David Silverman angry atheist. And then, the you know, the, the nicer atheist over there. And, you know, it 
it kind of has a wedge effect. And I, I think that you need both kinds that, you know, one, one to kind of draw your attention away from what's actually like getting accomplished. And then, you know, kind of the ones that give you warm fuzzies. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm a little drunk. Be honest. <laughs> oh, that's perfectly fine. I'm kicking back with my uh, beer right now, so you know we'll I'll just drink and chit chat together and just see where this thing goes. That's that's how we uh, normally do it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> perfect. Perfect. <laughs> I had just enough time to like chug it, like two beers, and then I rode home really quick, and now I'm starting to fill it, so it's great. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> Don't tell the cops. And when Wesley drinks beers, there's not like normal beers. Those are oh uh, yeah, no micros that are are eight nine percent alcohol. Ten. Ten. Oh, me too. In fact, this uh, beer that I'm drinking right now, it's by uh, I think I don't know if it's pronounced Tregs or Trogs. It's T R O E G S, and this particular mm. brew is called Troganator. It's a double nice. block beer. It's um. 8.2% alcohol per volume. So it has like the same potency as an IPA, but it doesn't make you feel like you're dying of thirst afterwards. <laughs> nice. Got some kick to it. Okay. Man. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm usually love Belgians and oh my goodness. Doubles, triples. Oh, well, well I might have to send you something. Cool. Cool. <laughs> man. Oh man. All right. Well, it's a little bit early, but let's go ahead and take our first break. And when we come back, uh, let's talk about your background. Cool. Atheist Nomads is proudly brought to you by Archway Hosting. Check out their low-price, full-featured hosting solutions at archwayhosting.com. That's A-R-C-H-W-A-Y hosting.com. Hey, we're also brought to you by listeners just like you. Find out how you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash atheist nomads. That's P A T R E O N dot com forward slash atheist nomads. All right. So you haven't always been a, a atheist or, or humanist. So uh, yeah, tell us about your background. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, well, I was raised what I like to call a wedding and funeral Christian. The only time my family <laughs> and I ever went to church was um, either when someone was getting either married or buried. But. Um, I was still taught about Jesus. I just wasn't really too deep into the Bible. Like my mom gave me one of those like little children's Bibles where it has like, you know, the cute little illustrations and whatnot. So I knew about Jesus, but I totally wasn't aware of like church culture or like everything the Bible said. I just knew like the basics. Um, And then in high school, like when I was in high school, it was during the late 90s when Marilyn Manson was all the rage. And so yeah, I was like a huge Marilyn Manson fan back in the day. And so like I just totally bought the whole Antichrist superstar image and said, oh, religion is stupid and blah, blah, blah. Even though I didn't know any of the actual arguments against God, all I knew was, you know, Marilyn Manson said religion was stupid and, you know, these people on TV like Pat Robertson and Jerry Falwell are assholes. So, you know, I guess it, I guess, um, I guess religion is full of shit. But, you know, also at the time during high school, I was going through a really tough time with depression. I mean, it was high school. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was tough for everyone. But for me, it was like really tough. Um, so, like, I was trying to find some sort of meaning something that would help with the pain like for a long time i was cutting myself and i was in therapy a few times for that until finally when i was about 17 i started dating this girl who was a christian and one night during a really bad depression spell i like broke down over the phone uh talking to her and just started crying and she offered me a lot of comforting words about how you know uh, God was there for me and all that stuff. And what she really honed in on was the fact that, you know, God was like the father I never had because I grew up without a father. Um, I mm. mean, it, yeah, I mean, yeah, he, he he bailed out on me and my mom when I was a baby. I mean, I've seen – I saw him from like time to time 
uh, when I was, you know, a kid, and we're cool now. We're we're friends on Facebook, but you know, that you know, when when she said that, you know, God would be like the father I never had, then that really sort of hit deep as well. And so, did that make you feel better, or did it piss you off though? Uh, no, it actually made me feel better because I was like so distraught. I was looking for pretty much anything to make me happy, and so. You know, this girl happened to say the right words at the right time. And so from there on in, I basically became a Christian. Uh, I was a Christian hmm. for about, let's see here, I was 17 at the time. Um, about a good 13 years, I think. Uh, uh, basically, wow. yeah, yeah. So um, <clears throat> when I first got into Christianity, um, the girl I was dating was involved in this charismatic church. It was a non-denominational church, but they pretty much operated. They had the same theology and worship style as Pentecostal churches with, you know, the dancing in the aisles and the hooping and the hollering and the, <laughs> you know, Jesus is coming, you know, let's all be excited for the apocalypse and speaking in tongues and all that crap. And I was... I never spoke in tongues or anything like that because I was always a more mellow person. Um, but I tried to play along because I didn't really know what else was out there in Christianity. So, But after a while, I started going to – it was in, in college. I started going to a mega church, which had like every bad mega church cliche possible. Like their youth group had like – they dimmed the lights and made it – made it seem like it was an MTV unplugged performance during <laughs> worship God. and no. yeah and um it was like the 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 sanctuary looked like i don't know some sort of i don't know it was set up more like an auditorium for a TED talk and there were like <laughs> slides and and worship music where they would repeat the same phrase over and over again you know even though that was better than the charismatic church after a while, I started realizing, yeah, something I write about this either. So <clears throat> then I started going to a conservative Lutheran church, and I liked the worship style. You know, it was, I, I like the more traditional style of worship. Um, and uh, around, let me see, I'm trying to think when things started to change. It, it's kind of hard to tell because it's a, it's been like a slow, gradual evolution from, oh. you know, Christianity to atheism. That's the best way I can describe it, really. There wasn't like one moment where I was like, wait a minute, something's not right here. It was more like little cracks in the ice that event that just kept you know kept popping up like i i started getting involved with the emergent um christian movement which is a much more progressive form of christianity and so from there i started deconstructing a lot of my previous held beliefs about things like the virgin birth and creationism versus evolution and uh, homosexuality is funny uh, first I became an LGBT ally then I came out as bisexual and genderqueer I kind of did that backwards for some reason um, <laughs> nice so you, you just made a, a so you made a gradual transition from well abrupt transition from nominally Christian to batshit crazy and then just gradually, slowly worked your way out. Yeah, yeah, basically. Um, it also didn't help, or maybe it did help, <laughs> that by the same time I was sort of deconstructing my theology, that I was engaged to this girl who um, whose family was like strict calvinists you know they 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 were like you know john piper mark driscoll and the like <laughs> where you know right right and so it was like you know my job as a man this is before i came out as genderqueer or even as i even before i realized i was genderqueer um that you know because i had a penis that you know somehow it was 
God like bestowed upon me so many responsibilities for providing for my family and being the spiritual head which means that I was somehow responsible for my fiance's religious beliefs or some stupid shit like that and they would go on and on and uh, so that definitely kind of pushed me to ex really deconstruct my beliefs even more and so finally well I finally broke up with my fiance and right around then actually I um, also came out as bisexual so basically what happened was I was just deconstructing my religious beliefs so much mm -hmm. that eventually one day God sort of disappeared mm-hmm okay it just keeps on getting smaller and smaller and you're like why do I still need this fuck it right exactly yeah well and it, it also makes sense that that would be happening in tandem with just learning more about yourself because mm -hmm. as you you lose that those those uh you know, especially the conservative uh, Christian beliefs, it makes it a lot easier to to recognize other things in yourself, things that don't live up to to that that hypothetical standard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In fact, it's sort of interesting. Like, um, when it's only now looking back that I realize, oh shit, I internalize a lot of damaging ideas, especially a lot of like sex negative ideas, which I'm not going to go go into the whole details about what goes on in the bedroom, but um it's yeah, that, that's okay. something I'm still trying to process and work out. And um I remember one thing that I really struggled with during my Christian years was the whole idea of original sin. You know, you're born a sinner. Like, I thought originally when I first became a Christian, I thought I found that very liberating because I was like, oh, wow, you know, you mean I'm not the only person who's fucked up? Hey, we're all fucked up. That's great. Until <laughs> I really started thinking about it more and I was like, well, shit, God is basically saying that I deserve hell just for being born just for being human you know and so you know even though the churches i went to talked a lot about grace and you know by you know by you know great through grace you're saved through faith and or, or whatever i don't know i still felt like you know you know i'm a dirty sinner you know there's absolutely nothing i can do to make myself become the person that i want to be this great holy person no matter what I do, no matter how hard I pray, and so that is definitely another um, idea that sort of implanted itself in my head that I'm still trying to get over. You know? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I've I've definitely found in my own experience that uh, every so often there's there's thoughts that I have that's like, okay, why am I thinking that? And it's yeah, hangover is left over from religion. I always right, thought that it would right. be it doesn't matter like what you do uh you just go in and get saved at the end and like fuck it everything's washed away and so you can like do whatever you want to <laughs> seem like the best get out of jail free card right you're supposed to repent whenever you uh, make a mistake you know it's not enough to simply go in and go into confession booth or well I, 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 I never was catholic but you know confess your sure. sins and you know ask god to forgive you and then go back living your life it's like no you have to repent that sin you know even for like the smallest little mistake you know <laughs> yeah oh, boy all right so we have yet you, you are our first guest that we've had that is uh gender queer and uh could you explain that a bit for us uh sure sure that's sort of like a catch-all term for people who don't identify as either 100 percent man or 100 percent woman like i was assigned male at birth but all through my life i kind of never really felt comfortable being a guy i'm not even talking about like you know tough macho masculine excuse me masculinity you know it's like oh i like football and 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 power tools and fast cars and 
and all that stuff, which, <laughs> you know, you, you don't have to be, you know, uh, you know, not, not into that tough masculine image doesn't mean you're not a man, even though our society tends to think otherwise, but it was, it wasn't just that, but also I kind of felt like, you know, oh, I feel like I'm kind of, I don't feel like I'm a woman trapped in a man's body, but I also feel like I'm one of the, I could be one of the girls as well. It was, it was so like, um, confusing to me because I didn't know that the term even existed. So it wasn't until like a couple years ago that I was watching someone on YouTube and they described being genderqueer as, uh, you know, being like, you know, this much boy and this much girl. And I'm like, oh, there's a word for that. <laughs> so I started, nice. yeah, I started exploring it. And at first I wasn't quite sure if the term applied for me because I don't want to like be the kind of person who, you know, adopts an identity just to be hip and cool. You know, that's something I really try to be conscious about. But it wasn't until I started really, you know, sort of exploring my gender and, like, trying different ways of presenting myself. Like, I shaved, shaved off my beard, grew my hair, and started wearing nail polish and scarves and women's boot cut jeans i was like i was like yep this fits gender queer it is and and uh, hey. actually before before uh, before i forget here's an here's another example that i use a lot of times uh when people ask me what it means to be gender queer um if like you take red paint and mix it with yellow paint you get a brand new color orange right so yep. that's how i view my gender queerness so, like if you take masculinity boy and girl and mix them together you get a brand new gender which i call gender queer okay i still get manicures and gel polish <laughs> I'm just not I'm just not down with the jeans, so they don't fit right. Okay, cool, cool. Well that's fine. Like like I said, you don't have to be like, you know, a super tough masculine guy to identify as a guy. It's just how hmm. you personally see yourself, you know? Yeah. You know. Just God, I need a manicure. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. It's been a while. Goodness. So do you think that label is a good effective label or do you think it's really just the best that can be done with the language we have available right now? Um, well, another catch-all term for people whose gender identity, identity doesn't fit in, into either 100% man or 100% 100 woman is non-binary. And I use that term a lot myself. I use non-binary and genderqueer um, interchangeably. Uh, as far as other labels, uh, well, there's like a lot of non-binary labels. There's bi-gender, there's agender, people who feel like they don't have any gender at all. There's demi-boy, demi-girl. It's... Here's another thing I like to explain to people, and my nerd friends really get this. People assume that gender is a strict binary of man and woman, but actually, from a non-binary, non-dichotomous point of point of view, it's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, gendery wendery stuff. <laughs> Congratulations on the kind of Doctor Who reference. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm glad you got it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the pronoun thing. Um, are uh -huh. you? Oh, a, wait. Let's let's take a break before we get to pronoun. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sure. All right. We love hearing from our listeners. You can email us at contact at atheistnomads.com. Tweet us at atheistnomads. Send us a message on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash atheistnomads. Or better yet, call us and leave us a message at five four one two zero three. 0666. We might even play it on the show. You can also help us out by leaving us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcast directory of choice. Go ahead. So, Trev. So, Trev, uh, about uh -huh. uh, pronouns. I I hear there's a a, a whole bunch of stuff, a bunch of uh, hoo ha about this stuff. Uh, 
So do you do you uh, identify as like he him or they them or she her? They them actually. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, there's there's no other um, pronouns in the um, English language that really that's um, uh, uh, gender neutral. <laughs> you know, the only well, well, there is it, but it's very a I don't know harsh. dehumanizing. You know, you yeah. call an object yeah. an it, not a person. Inanimate objects, right? Which is quite unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now there I are thought, some who use. Oh, I'm sorry. What did you about to say? Oh, I, I was. Aren't didn't the French or there was some European country that was actually making a a, a brand new term? Just throwing that um, out there. I'm not sure. I'll have to double check. I do know there are like certain countries. If somebody wants to fact check me, go right ahead. That are listing uh, third gender options on i think driver's licenses i'm not uh, or Birth that, that sounds like think. yeah yeah that's it that'd that's be germany it. been, right that's it yeah yeah it's been a while since i read that article so i, I don't really remember it uh that much you well, know now as far, one thing sorry, i think right makes ahead. it easier for germany is german has is a, a three gender language oh okay they have really? masculine feminine and neuter Oh, it, it would be. Well, shit, why do they have to have that? Not us. Uh, we we got rid of gender and language, with the exception of pronouns. Oh, okay. And so we have three genders and pronouns. We have masculine, feminine, and neuter, uh -huh. but neuter ended up becoming either plural or inanimate. Oh, uh, okay, gotcha. I, I found it. Uh, Sweden adds a gender. Oh, okay. They added a gender neutral pronoun to their dictionary. Uh, so it's basically Han, H A N is he, H O N, Han is she, and then Hen, H E N, uh, will be added to to make a, a third gender hmm. and to their language. They're kind of introducing it into like uh, kindergartens or like preschools. And just basically, this new generation will just have it with them. Kind of neat. Yeah. Cool. Well, and I personally, I, I, and you know, I'm a, a cisgender male who is as far on the, the masculine side of the gender spectrum as, as you know, possible without being a complete raging asshole. Right. At least I try not to be a complete raging asshole. Uh, <laughs> I, I prefer the idea of creating a new gender neutral pronoun uh, over repurposing the plural. Yeah, yeah, that does sound nice. Um, there are some who use alternative pronouns like uh, Z, um, yeah. but and uh, I'm trying to think. There's some. There's some others, but um, Z here pronouns are pretty much the only like the one alternative pronoun that I'm most familiar with. You know. Yeah, I th well, that you can you can probably go on Google and find all sorts of um, gender neutral pronouns. Well, I just can't remember them right now. Facebook has something like fifty options, I think. Holy shit! Right, cool. right. Although I think that's more for like gender identities and not um, mm. uh, pronouns. Yeah, that is that is gender identities. I know they do have a. Uh, I think they have added a pronoun option as well, hmm. but I'm not I'm not certain on that. Uh, but so with the the Z. Is that X or Z? Uh, Z. That is with the Z. Uh huh. Okay. Because if it was an X, that would make sense because it'd be, you know, the the variable. Right. Uh, you're right. Going well, for the actually, I think term. there is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think there is a um, uh, an alternative pronoun with X E. I'll have to search that later on. Hmm. Well, since you guys laid it out, I guess I will too. I'm, I'm, I'm on a scale of uh, Dustin on one side and you on the other side, Trav. <laughs> I'm, I'm more uh -huh. towards Dustin's side, but somewhere more in the middle ish. Yeah, just saying. Oh, okay, just well little. that's fine. Yeah, like I said, wibbly wobbly, gendery wendery stuff. Yeah. Something like that. 
Uh, so okay, I, I back on the on the on the pronouns thing because oh, yeah. I, I I I do love uh, language and and how it all works in the history and development and uh, uh-huh. especially how to make sure things are clear and clear, precise, and accurate. Mm-hmm. What what do you see as the advantages of using they and them? Uh, other than the fact that those are readily available words in our current lexicon? Um, well, basically, it lets people know that not everyone falls into the strict binary... Um, n- not everyone falls into he or she categories, you know, in the little uh, forms... Not everyone fits into the M or F boxes, right? So mm-hmm. I think that definitely opens up a lot of conversations and hopefully change some people's minds about gender, you know? Okay. Uh, do you have any concerns about it causing any confusion? Yeah, yeah. In fact, um, I forgot to mention this story. Um... My Facebook friends, they're totally cool with me being genderqueer, although sometimes they're a little bit um, hesitant about the pronoun thing. In fact, um, you notice a lot of people calling you Trav in, in, in sentences versus using they, them um, go, out, go out of your go out of their way to, to use your name. Oh, oh, you mean like uh, Trav went to Trav's car to get uh, Trav's <laughs> cigarettes out of out of the yeah. glove box or something like that? Yeah, something like that. Um, no, not really, but okay. one time there was a bit of a, I don't know, an, I don't know if argument's a good word, but more like a couple of my friends were like, you know, but they, them is plural. I mean, I'm totally cool with you being genderqueer and wanting to use gender neutral pronouns but man the english language it needs a you know a singular gender neutral option you know because they is plural da, 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 da. so i was finally like okay fine just call me z here here's you know whatever <laughs> yeah totally i mean like somebody invites you to a party and then you know that person thinks uh when you somebody says they uh somebody thinks that you have a plus one coming now like what the fuck Right, yeah, right. Just me. Exactly. Now, we, when know. you look at, at historical development of, you know, or the the develop historical development of of the English language, there w- used to be uh, singular and plural second person uh, pronouns. So there was thee, thou, and thine for singular, and uh-huh. you, your, and yours for plural. And uh-huh. the plural end up becoming more commonly used as a, a sign of respect for people of a higher class than you, um, kind of like the, the royal we. <laughs> and then eventually, by about 1600, uh, the singular pretty much just completely fell out of popular usage. Oh. Fast forward 200 years in the southern United States, people found the need for a second person plural, and y'all was born. <laughs> right i i have i don't take serious issue with turning they and them into singular but it will oh, end okay. up creating thal yeah <laughs> and if we're gonna have to create a new word um yeah we could either create it later to replace the plural or add it in on the singular uh, I'm all for making a now. completely different word. Let's just not let the South make anything new. <laughs> <laughs> and, I like that. Well, especially since eventually, <laughs> since in the South, from what I understand, y'all isn't enough. So now you have all y'all. <laughs> and oh, if we yeah. had all of y'all, that would be, oh, no, no, we don't need that. <laughs> y'all, y'alls, all y'alls. Yeah. <laughs> you can, pl- you can plural that shit too. <laughs> No. <laughs> hey, and so, so then the the other question. Okay, since your your preferred pronoun is is uh, they them, um, uh-huh. which form of the verb to be is or they or is or are? Uh oh. that would be are. Which okay. you know it is confusing as well, but you know, um, like when I hear other people who use the, they them pronouns. 
uh, they use R instead of is because, you know, they is kind of makes it sound like, I don't know, an old black stereotype, you know? <laughs> and that it, just oh, does. Oh, going that to goes, get a cigarette. That follows with you. <laughs> it right. does, but it goes, you know, is is more of a singular. So, I don't but, know, I could... Wesley, if I'm just talking to you, yes. I will ask if you are fine. And that's and because he, you is, is a plural term that is now singular as well. But uh, are um, followed with it. It's not. But if we're talking like he, she, they, oh, well, he, she, then it, it is, is. Right. So that would, to me, that would translate to they also. But with, with. You, uh, like you, using you as the example, person. when you when there was a singular uh, the, there was a the would have gone with is, while you went with r, and when they dropped the, they kept r with you, whether it's singular singular or plural. All right. So it gets confusing when you start dropping parts of of uh, of of uh, pronoun structures, huh. or not necessarily confusing yeah. because everybody knows how to use it. Uh, everybody knows how to use it just by rote i mean come on it's not and most people don't actually study english past what seventh eighth grade well actually i'm an english major i am hopefully by the hopefully by after summer i'll finally have my bachelor's degree in it ah congratulations thank you thank you You'll have a degree that is just slightly less uh, useless than mine. Uh, my, mine's in theology. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> well, if it makes you feel any better, uh, my major is in English and my minor is in philosophy. My minors were uh, history and biblical languages. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So about <laughs> the same boat. <laughs> All right. It's time for our last break and then we will be back. If you like this show, consider giving us some financial support. We make it really easy with one-time donations or to support us on a per-episode, monthly, or even annual basis using PayPal or Patreon. Find out more at AtheistNomads.com. Use the links on the right side of the page. One dollar an episode is all we ask. Please, think of the kittens. Now, honestly, I was expecting the uh, pronouns discussion to go longer. <laughs> and have more, uh, more arguments oh sorry um <laughs> i don't know i'm not a very argumentative person <laughs> when it comes to fancy book learning i, I just kind of you know shake my head and agree mm. all right so i i also see on your uh your uh, uh website that you um identify as a secular humanist yes <gasps> oh why Was did that you a bad pick... thing? No, 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 no. <laughs> Why did you pick that as your your uh, your label as opposed to atheist? Oh, actually, I identify as both atheist and uh, secular humanist. Um, basically, what I do is um, – well, the reason why I push humanists more than atheists is even though it's a cliche, it's true. You know, atheists only tells people what I don't believe, whereas humanists tells people what I do believe. And so, you know, I don't want people to think that all I do is just rag on religion all the time, which, I mean, I do that quite a bit, but I also <laughs> want to balance that out with you know, telling people that, you know, I still believe in love, I believe in beauty, I believe in justice, and those are the the goals that I pursue, and that's, so that's why I use both labels. Okay. Damn, you really are not an argumentative person. No, not really, unless you want to, like, I don't know, debate me about, I don't know, just pick a controversial topic. or Doctor Who sucks. Sorry. Okay, we're um, now it's my turn to end this conversation. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm a tenant person. I I don't oh, like, I didn't like yeah. Matt Smith. Oh yeah, yeah David um, Tennant, he was the best. Yeah. Capaldi. Eh. Yeah, I mean, I like him, but I don't know. He just can't hold a candle to uh, David Tennant. No. Right? In fact, speaking of David Tennant, I still need to finish watching Jessica Jones. I started it, but then, like, <gasps> oh. I don't know. I haven't had time to finish it. 
Mm. You need to watch that. And then if you can't get enough and done it, David Tennant, you still want more go on, go back to Netflix and watch broad church. Oh that yeah. That's another up. show that I need to finish watching. I only saw like a couple of episodes of that as well. Really? really? That shit hooked me in. Oh man. Yeah. I and my girl would just marathoned it. I haven't seen broad church and, uh, I've seen bits and pieces of Jessica Jones. I loved them both. Man. Lauren was watching Looking that f- while I'd be editing. Ah, Jessica Jones that got picked up for a second season. Daredevil's coming back really soon. Luke Cage should be coming really soon after that. And there's a, another one. Oh shit. Shit. Oh man. I love my MCU. Uh, Marvel uh, comic universe. Yeah. Uh, anyways. Yeah. Are, are you, are you down with the, the geeky side of things? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I am like a huge Doctor Who fan. I love Supernatural, Sherlock. Uh, let's see here. Sherlock's what other awesome. fandoms I into? Um, oh, one show that I just finished watching and I'm waiting for them to release new episodes is Steven Universe on on uh, uh, Cartoon Network. I haven't heard of this. Oh, it's fantastic. It's, uh, of course, naturally an animated show about this uh, boy named Steven Universe. His father is a human, and his mother was part of an advanced alien race called called the Gems, where they all have, like, magical powers out of their, I don't know, embedded uh, crystal gems and... He, Stephen, like, lives with three other crystal gems, Pearl, Amethyst, and Garnet, and they sort of help him use, harness his powers, and it's a really good show. Really hooks you in. I mean, mean, at least it hooked me in, you know? Hmm. Oh, I found the other Netflix one. Uh, The Punisher, he's coming back. Oh, cool, cool. And he's going to tie really tight into Daredevil. Remember that trailer? Yeah, uh, Daredevil's or uh, Punisher's gonna like shake some shit up. So can't wait. Great, great. You know what? Another Netflix show I really love is Sense Eight. Sense Eight was a pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. The Wachowski brothers really failed there for a while, but Sense Eight that was pretty damn good. Oh yeah, definitely. And I mean, the first couple episodes were a little bit slow, although. Um, sure. Well, they had although, so many characters, it takes some time to build up. Right, right. Although Nomi and Amanita, of course, instantly grabbed my attention. <laughs> you know, sure. especially since Amanita was is played by you know Martha Jones from Doctor Who. So I was like, <laughs> oh wow, they actually have a trans actress, and Martha Jones is her girlfriend. I'm gonna love this show. Yeah, that that was pretty awesome. Uh, for people that don't know, Sensate is about a group of a small group of people. I think it's uh, what tw- uh, eight people was it? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Anyways, eight. have a telepathic connection uh, around the world, and they could uh, sense the feelings of other people and actually like have I don't know uh, conversations with them, uh, see them, even when they weren't in the room. It's kind of kind of weird, kind of cool. They were being hunted by other people, you know. Anyways, uh, totally ripping on it. Uh, Really good show, though. It'd be awesome. Yeah, definitely. Uh, they're bringing it back, aren't they? Yeah, I can't wait to see it's what they do in the next season. Well, you give me some uh, Kimmy Schmidt, and I'll be happy. Cool, cool. And that's one show I haven't seen yet. I should probably see that soon. It's it was pretty kind of, good, and it doesn't take long to get through. Oh, okay, it, gotcha. It, it's kind of like pop candy. I don't know. It's really neat. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of like a movie Amelie, you know, no matter how good or how bad I feel watching Amelie will make me feel better. And oh, okay, it's kind of, cool. kind of the same for Kimmy Schmidt. Yeah. A girl who comes out of a, a survival bunker with a, uh, where she was trapped with a cult leader for a decade and gets to figure out the world. Oh, cool. It's, it's cool. really yeah, cool. I heard some pretty good, 
Yeah, I heard good things about it. I'll have to... Once I find some time, I'll have to... That'll probably be the next thing I binge watch. Oh, that's one thing you'll have to... You have to look forward to when you, you uh, graduate from college is getting that moment <laughs> where you have a job and you work 40 hours a week and then you sit at <laughs> home and you watch stuff and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, what do I do now? I actually have free time. <laughs> this is so weird. What do I do with it? Right. Well, me and my girlfriend color and watch TV. Trev, you're all right, man. <laughs> oh, good. Thanks. Who's next up? Whose show are, are you on next? Oh, uh, I th- that would be the Secular Barbershop with uh, Uber47. Uh-huh. I interviewed him um, a couple weeks ago, and this week he's returning the favor. Oh, nice. nice. I've heard him a couple times over on uh, uh, Angry Black Ranch. Angry Black Ranch? Uh, ang- yes. Well, it's Ishmael, Ishmael's show. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. B- That's really how I first job. heard him, too. Yeah, doing a real good job on there. Yeah, yeah, and he has, like, the one of the coolest podcast voice in the world. It's like, what's up, secular minorities? This is Uber 47 <laughs> coming at you at the secular barbershop. I was like, oh, why, why can't I have a cool <laughs> voice like that? You know, I got this high, nasally, hi, this is Trav Mamone. You're listening to By Any Means Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Nice. All right, what you got to plug? Give us okay, all the, if, give us a down. Yep, you can check out my podcast and my blog, which I don't really blog that much. I mostly do the podcast, but when I do blog, it can be found in the same place you can find my podcast, which is www.byanymeans.com with by spelled B-I, and you can subscribe to the podcast through either iTunes, Spreaker, or Stitcher. Hmm. Do you have a Twitter's? Yeah, yeah, it's at Teamamon. And also you can uh follow the By Any Means page on Facebook at Facebook.com slash by any means podcast. Sweet. Very nice. Alrighty, well thank you very much for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. Yay. Okay, Travis gone now, so it's just Wesley and I. Um I, I am really freaking excited because you know, we had this, and if you listen to the the thank you uh, message I sent out, um, some of this will be repetitive, but last episode, we had the $100 match from Travis McGee that was exceeded amazingly. Uh, $330 is where that ended up going by the time it was all said and done. And wow. uh, more money has come in since then, uh, since we officially closed it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, this this means a lot, and you don't have to stop sending us money by any means. <laughs> uh, we appreciate it. Uh, it. It will help with the tax bill and 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 uh, food and and all of that. Um, but I did get the order placed for the equipment upgrades today, and the first shipment will be coming in Thursday. So. Yeah, today is Tuesday that we're we're recording. So shortly after this is released, I will be having a box delivered at my door with the new interface, and I think all of the stuff we will need to actually have the third mic set up. And uh, hopefully, unless you already have somebody lined up for the next interview, uh, we can put that to use. Oh, awesome! No, uh, I actually don't. So that'll be two weeks away. No, yeah, if you got somebody local, let's. That, they'll be the one we'll be doing the weekend before our normal recording date since you'll be hung over after your birthday and I will right. be caucusing with Bernie, for Bernie Sanders. Badass. Yeah, yeah. So, I have to caucus myself. Yeah, very exciting stuff. And uh, we are just shy of a month away, actually by release, um, just less than a month away from uh, our, our live show that we'll be doing in Tacoma. On Saturday, April 9. Oh, yeah. At a time and location that will be determined later. So if you are in the Seattle, Tacoma, Puget Sound metropolitan area or western Washington in general, heck, if you want to drive across the mountains, by all means, uh, we'll be having a live show in Tacoma. And yeah, come uh, come see us and, and buy us drinks. And you know what? If you uh, donate to the show and you come out, I'll buy you a drink. 
Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, should we talk about uh, April? Yes. Uh, okay. So live show is April. Uh, oh, the the app, um, both for for Apple and and Android, should be released here in the next couple of weeks. Awesome. So by our, our live show, uh, April nine. Um, that should be up. Uh, so we'll have a show player that's uh, on iTunes and Android. Yep. Available Badass. in the, the app stores and, and the Google Play Store. So that'll be awesome. Uh, and not only does it have the ability to, to play shows directly from it, but you can email us, call us, uh, I think tweet us and go to our Facebook page all directly from within the app. So huh, it'll sure. be the easiest way to interact with us. Yeah, okay. so awesome, awesome uh, thing that we'll have. And it will be free. And then, yes, uh, so what else is going on in April? Uh, well, you know, March was, you know, everybody helping us out. Definitely much appreciated. Uh, April, we're going to start helping you guys out a little bit, you know. Get some swag going. Uh, T-shirts, buttons, stickers, anything like that. So. Uh, we're actually going to finally do this thing. Yeah. We've thought and talked about it for a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. Only talked about it for a couple of years. Fuck. Uh, I was really thinking about getting a t-shirt going for each of our nuclear sponsors. Oh, that'd be, that'd be awesome. You know, I, I think they really deserve something because you know, they've really stuck with us. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I, I totally agree. Especially uh, my buddy Russ. I know it'd look really good. In one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, very nice. So yeah, big things coming. Uh, keep your, your eyes and ears open and, uh, we'll be back next week with news. Thank you for listening to another episode of Atheist Nomads. You can find show notes and contact information at atheistnomads.com. Follow us on Twitter at Atheist Nomads and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Atheist Nomads. Please subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcatcher of choice. And while you're there, feel free to leave us a review. The music is courtesy of Sturdy Fred. Until next time, this has been The Atheist Nomads.